Hey everybody. Well, uh, I'm pretty much off work early today. You know, way early. So I was just gonna hang the fuck out, jump back there, and play Xbox or something like that. Watch, watch TV. <laughs> but I figured, why not make a video first? Um, so. I was listening, what was I listening I was listening to the, uh, the Joe Rogan podcast earlier while I was driving, and uh, he had Ben Shapiro on, and they got to talking about automated trucks, and I kind of thought about making this video, talking about this, cause it's, but it's been done to death, but you know what, fuck it, I'll just, I feel like I have kind of, well, maybe not a different take, like, look, the way, as far as the automated truck thing goes and you know just for I guess a, just a little bit of background I'm talking about automated trucks trucks in the future that they're working on I think like either Google or, or Uber is working on it or something like that they're working on it certain manufacturers are <clears throat> and uh, it's it's in like prototype phases and shit like that I think they're just trying to make something that they could sh they can like prototypes that they can get uh, investment behind, they can get uh, manufacturers or, or they, they, I think right now they're just looking for investment because they need to be able to get the money to build something that's functional that they can actually present to like the DOT or something like that. And if it, you know, if they can actually get this, you know, this concept of an automated truck to pass the FMCSA and the DOT standards and all that shit. Then, you know, I think at that point, once it's a, they can get it approved, then they want to start shopping it out to uh, uh, carriers, <clears throat> right? And if you, don't, if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you're a trucker, you've got to, because truckers talk about this shit all the time. If you don't know what I'm talking about, like I always, Google it. Google is your friend, as my friend would say. But as far as the whole automated truck argument goes... There's basically, there's two schools of, there's just, really it's just, it's like most other things. There's just two hardcore ways to look at it, really. I mean, it really, it's people who are really, really against it, namely truckers, and then just, you know, people that are, I don't know, generally capitalists that know what they're talking about. And then I think there's people that see it as an inevitability, something that's going to happen whether any of us like it or not. And like, there's no way to fight it and stuff like that. And there's a lot of truckers that believe that too. You know, but I don't know. You know, there, there, there is, there's water to. What do I think is gonna happen? I think that if I had, if I had to, if I had to put money down on the outcome of whether or not we're going to have automated trucks. I have to place my bet on it happening, <clears throat> just because it's like it's like anything else. You know, it's just like how far we've come with technology. You know, just now it doesn't take ten years to for an industry to revolutionize. It just takes a year or two. It does not take very long. The, the, the rate at which we're progressing, uh, as far as uh, technology and innovation is concerned, is that rate is just constantly accelerating faster and faster and faster and faster and it compounds every every kind of sector of like the technological field as far as communication and computing and manufacturing every step it all builds onto each other it all becomes more and more efficient you know all these different fields of innovation they 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 all kind of work together to make things work better and faster and cheaper and shit like that. So we're we're getting we're getting to this point where we're we're, we're reaching technologies like uh, automated cars and automated trucks a lot faster, right? <clears throat> so I think it's yeah, probably going to happen. But here's the fucked up thing about it, you know. There's just there's so many issues that are inherent with the concept of an automated truck, it's like, I kind of don't understand, really, how the fuck they could make it happen. You know, I mean, I understand how we can make automated cars happen for a lot of reasons. When you, 
automated cars and automated trucks are not the same argument. They're really not. They're not in this. They're not in the same ballpark. Hell, they ain't even the same fucking league. They're just. They're vastly fucking different arguments. Automated cars are already on the road. Yeah, they got some kinks that need to be worked out. But I'm sure they'll work them out. But automa automating a car and automating uh, a semi, an 18-wheeler, any kind of large, gross weight vehicle, is two very, very fucking different things. For a litany of fucking reasons. But, like, since we already have automated cars on the road, They've already ironed out the manufacturers of automated cars. They've already ironed out most of the most of the issues to the point where they're legal to be on the road. You know, they got a couple of other issues they got to figure out. But when you when you want to apply that same formula to uh, semi trucks and eighteen wheelers, there's just so many issues that just like. Okay, off the top of my head, like the first issue I can think of is you have to program that computer utilizing its various array of sensors and shit like that. You've got to program that computer and that automated truck to handle, to assess and make decisions on tens of thousands of different scenarios. I mean, there's. I mean, when you're driving, when you're in a car, sure, there's thousands of different scenarios. But when you're talking about a 70 foot, 80 thousand pound, eight and a half foot wide, nine foot wide vehicle, you know, with with all types of different laws and restrictions on where it can go, where it can fit, things like that, how much how much it can weigh, you know, you then you get into the ten the tens of thousands of different. Uh, outcomes and situations, scenarios, the possible scenarios that this truck can encounter that it has to make a decision on and be able to not only just navigate through that scenario but do it in a safe manner. You know, so the people who say, well, it's an inevitable, uh, like, like what's his name? It's real big on this shit. Um, the guy on the, it has his own, sh uh, trucking business and beyond. I can't remember his fucking name off the top of my head. But he sees it as an inevitability. Like, it's definitely going to happen. He 100% believes that they, anything, they they can, uh, any situation that truck encounters, it can make a decision and it can make it better and faster. They can make it to where it can make that decision better and faster than a driver driving that truck. You know, and I understand why he thinks that way. Uh... Something Mike Russell? I can't remember his fucking name. But I'm sure you guys probably know who I'm talking about. But you gotta think, there's certain situations, like day to day, like I, I come into situations to where I gotta step back and look at that situation. Like, okay, how am I gonna get out of this? Like, I was at a shipper tent this morning where it's like the exit was closed off because there was a train track there and there's a train parked on the tracks. So they didn't even have the gate open. So you, you had to go back through the entrance, but there's nowhere to turn around. So it's like, okay, I've got a back, I've got a blind side back over there, and then I've got to turn around through here, and then I could go back around this building and blah blah blah. Like, okay, you know, that's not super difficult. I guess you could program a truck to figure that shit out, but you know, like one thing that I, I like this whole winter. Like, I went through a couple of blizzards this winter and a bunch of snow and ice and shit like that. The whole time, I was always thinking to myself, you know, even if you program a truck to... Because the way I look at it is, when, when you're driving on snow and ice and you're driving in adverse conditions like that, you know, freezing rain, what have you, you gotta be able to read the road. You, ever, you gotta be able to see what, what, what the road looks like and you gotta be able to feel it as you're driving. You know, the feel, the characteristics of the road, shit like that. And then you can judge on how fast you want to go and should you even be fucking driving in these conditions. you got to make that fucking judgment call. You know, there are certain conditions where trucks really shouldn't be driving in. You know, I mean, if you're careful enough and you're willing to take the risk, there's most situations you can take this fucking truck through. But every so often, there are situations where 
you have you have no choice but you have to stop that truck especially out west when they decide to shut the interstates down because it's so bad the, it's snowing so bad the plows can't even keep up and the interstates out there buried under three feet of snow well they just shut the fuckers down until the plows catch up what does that automated truck do when they bring those gate arms down over the interstate that says either return to cheyenne interstates closed or exit now interstates closed what does that truck do okay i mean okay say that you program that truck okay it, it it reads the situation, it pulls off the freeway, and it goes to the nearest truck stop. Okay, what if the, all, all, what if that, the truck stop there is full, has nowhere to park? Where does that truck go? What if that truck stop area is the only place where it can park, but there's no open spaces? To where, like, one of us, we would have to, like, make a space to where we're kind of... We're not in a parking space, but we're out of the way so that we're not blocking anything. What does that fucking truck do? How does it make that judgment call on where it should park in a situation like that? You know, there's all these different situations. I mean, the only way I can think of it working is if you get like a dedicated route, like a van or maybe reefer only, like really just van only, like van loads between two terminals. So where all that automated truck has to do is drive from this terminal to that terminal. And that's it. And then it, it's programmed to drop a trailer in a specific drop yard and then pick up another. It reads on what trailer to pick up or whatever the fuck. Yard jockeys tell it what trailer to pick up. And then someone's got to go out there and connect the fucking lines and raise the gear and pre-trip the fucking trailer. So I don't know who's, who's pre-tripping this shit. You know? Not to mention, I don't know who's fucking fueling these trucks while they're out on the road. I really don't... Who, uh, if an airline comes loose, it, it has to pull over and call for road service, I guess. That's what you're going to have to program these trucks to do. Anytime there's an issue, they're going to have to stop and send a call to the, the main hub, the computer. Hey, I need road service. And I guess it'll pull into the shoulder. And hopefully it's smart enough to not pull into the shoulder if there's a broken down car or an... Or, or debris in the fucking shoulder. Hopefully it knows better than to... And maybe maybe it's programmed so that when it sees that debris in the shoulder, it goes back onto the road. But if it swerves back onto the road, is it raining or snowing outside? What if it swerves back onto the road and loses fucking control? This is what the fuck I'm talking about. There's, there's thousands of fucking combinations of scenarios that these trucks are going to have to be programmed to fucking decide. And I'm here to tell you, I don't, whoever's programming these trucks, I don't give a shit if they're a 30 year veteran of the trucking industry and they've done it all and they've seen it all and they've got 10 million fucking, you know, or, or 10 million fucking safe miles or some crazy shit like that. And that, you have a panel of these, these 30 year veterans of the trucking industry. They're owner, they've been owner operators and they, they've seen it all and they've been across the country in every scenario. and. They're telling the programmers how what the, these trucks need to work, watch out for. It doesn't fucking matter. I guarantee you that truck will come across a scenario that no one's ever come across before. Or that happens very, very, very infrequently, but it's happening, it happens today. You, you just can't, you cannot, I don't see how you can prepare that computer to decide, make a decision on every fucking variable. I just don't see it. I don't know how you could do it. And be safe at the same time. Because I, I'm just, I'm here to tell you. The, the, if, if they get these trucks on the road, they get them approved through the DOT, and they get some of the, like, Swift, I could see Swift being one of the first ones to jump on this fucking automated truck train, you know. But say Swift goes out and decides to buy, like, 10 of these trucks just to test the waters. The very first time one of these trucks causes a million dollar fucking accident, they're gonna sell off, they're gonna get rid of all the ones they have, and that word is gonna spread across the industry. Like, you know, computerized truck makes a fucking mistake, and then it, swer it tries to swerve when it shouldn't, and it overturns a truck, and it falls on a minivan full of little girls and a soccer mom, and they're into a fucking multi-million dollar lawsuit, it's just, it shuts down the interstate for fucking 10 hours. It's this huge fucking deal. Oh my fucking God. The first time that happens, it's it, like all bets are off. I'm here to tell you. 
There ain't no like, well, looks like we're gonna have to go back to the drawing board on that. No, all the trucking companies are gonna say, fuck that shit. The, I mean, you gotta think, is the money you're gonna save on running these trucks? Because I imagine you're gonna save, over the course of years, billions of fucking dollars. Billions, probably, or at least hundreds of millions. But is your insurance company gonna even fucking allow it? If you're taking these multi-million dollar lawsuits, and you know what, that, as far as accidents are concerned, that's, that's my next point, as far as these automated trucks are concerned, is as far as the FMCSA and all of the regu rules, laws, and regulations we have to put up and deal with as an industry, it's all centered around one fucking aspect, and that's responsibility and accountability. Who is, who is, who do you hold, who is to blame, and who do you hold responsible in case of something going wrong? Who, whose fault is it? That's why you have the CSA, it's all about accountability of the driver, and accountability of the carrier, and so on and so forth. You know, like, you, a lot of times when you, when you pick up a load, you have to sign up, like, this is big with flatbed, and you get a bill of lading, you have to sign something that says, once that load leaves our property, or once it's on the truck, by signing this, you recognize that the load is yours, and you're in complete, total control and responsibility of that load. And like, if, it, if you're sign you signing on the dotted line means this load was loaded properly, and that you will secure it properly, and up to laws and regulations and shit like that. So if you don't sec secure a coil correctly, and it falls off, and it hits a goddamn school bus, that shipper cannot be held responsible because you didn't secure that coil properly. So the driver is at, at fault. The driver, the flatbed driver, is 100% uh, to blame in control and responsibility of securement of a load, so on and so forth, so on and so on. I mean, even if you haul van loads and shit like that, you're responsible. Like, you, you cannot leave, you shouldn't leave, unless you're loaded properly. You can load a van trailer wrong, I've seen van trailers that had shifted loads because they were loaded improperly and they were fucking leaning going down the road. Same thing. Okay, you know, and so that's one big thing is how, like, we're only talking about van here. We're not talking about reefer. We're not talking about tanker or flatbed because I don't know how the fuck you're going to run those loads without a driver. Maybe reefer because you, you need something, someone that can monitor that load. Because what happens if the little light on the side of that reefer, that thermo king, goes out and it dies? It's dead. And you're, you're hauling ice cream at like negative 30 degrees or some shit like that, right? That thermo king dies the fuck out. Okay, well, say you set it up to where the thermo king can talk to that truck, right? I mean, that, then that truck's got to figure out what to do. It's got to send a message and say, okay, my thermo king just died, and I got, you know, 40,000 pounds of Ben and Jerry's fucking ice cream back there. And it's 95 degrees outside. What now? What, what does that truck do? What? Do you, how do you handle that situation? And I'm not even talking. Tanker and flatbed? Fucking forget it. Ta fucking forget it. I mean, I don't, I've never driven tanker, but I'm sure there's shit like, you know, it, you've got to, you've got all, I'm not even talking about fucking, I'm talking about food grade tanker. There's no way you're going to get a computer to haul hazmat tanker. No fucking way. There's way too many fucking rules and regulations that you have to abide by. That there's no way a fucking... All the inspections and shit you guys have to do. Tankers, as far as I'm concerned, are held to the highest standards in the industry. You know, and so they really have to have their equipment in check. And they have to, you know, everything has to be... Their P, the, the T's crossed and I's dotted, shit like that. You can't fuck around when it comes to tanker. You, and that truck has to be driven in a specific fashion for tankers. Because they handle differently and shit like that. But let's talk about food grade tanker, not not hazmat. You know, what if that trailer's got a leak in it? What if there's just a very slow drip? And if there's no driver, how do you even notice that? How does the truck even know if there's a very slow drip? You know, you can't you can't have leaky tankers, right? It's against the law, I'm sure. What I believe. And a flatbed? Okay, who's securing the fucking loads? You know, and you could say, well. Come on, dude. It's just like when they have drop trailers, like preloaded trailers. They could just preload it and pre-tarp it, pre-secure it. Sure. So when, 
I'll, I'll humor you. Let's 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 go for that argument. Let's say that truck shows up to pick up a preloaded flatbed trailer, and it's been preloaded, pre-secured, pre-tarped. What if it wasn't pre-secured properly? And that truck pulls out on the road and it's driving down the road normally as it always does, and that load shifts. How the fuck does that computer even know the load shift? They don't have a mirror. It can, does it have sensors that know? You know, maybe it does. I don't know. I just. How does it know if that fucking if the chains and straps are loose? How does it know? And if if they do come loose, who the fuck is there to tighten them? Are you gonna stop and call road service out to come and tighten the fucking straps? How does this any of this fucking work? That's why I'm saying the only way I can see it working is for is for van only. And even then, like I said, there's still thousands of fucking scenarios that I don't know how that you could program a computer to handle that. So that's what I'm saying. I just it, will it happen? I don't know. Maybe. Look, this is all I'm going to say before I run out of memory. If we do get computerized trucks, you know, maybe it'll end the fucking industry. Maybe I, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Maybe we're all out of the fucking job in 10, 20 years, right? Maybe. But if they do, if they do get these fucking trucks on the road, I'm not fucking driving anywhere near them. Now, I, I, you will not, I will not be caught dead driving anywhere within like a fucking 200 foot radius of one of these trucks and if i gotta pass one i'm passing it 20 30 miles an hour higher than it's fucking going if this if it's going 60 i'm doing 90 past that motherfucker because i don't trust it and you shouldn't either and i uh, i'm telling you mark my fucking words if they put these trucks on the road just wait for that first 10 million dollar lawsuit and who, who the fuck, and who are you going to blame? Are you going to blame the carrier? Or do you blame the fucking company who manufactured the truck? They're just going to be pointing fingers at each other. Who do you blame? Well, I'm out of memory. That's all I got on that subject, man. Put, tell me what you think in the comments, you know?